Okay, so I want uh, to make a few remarks about this proof, uh, which is which says that there are no non-constant uh, global regular functions on a projective variety. Uh, the there is only one issue uh, with this proof, namely that I need that y intersection u i is non-empty for every i. Okay, and what I want to say is that uh, given uh, a y uh, a closed as a, as a projective sub variety of projective space it could happen that y may not intersect a certain ui okay and therefore uh, in that case we reduce to a case we reduce this we can reduce this n okay to come to uh, a situation where y is embedded in a projective space and it intersects every ui okay and how we can do that is by realizing that if y doesn't uh, hit a certain ui then y is completely contained in the complement of that ui but the complement of that ui is the locus where xi vanishes and the locus where xi vanishes is uh, a projective space of one dimension less okay so uh, y is embedded in a projective space of one dimension less okay and you can therefore go to you can work in that projective space now that projective space will again have an affine cover and you check whether y intersects each of those uh, members in, a, in an affine cover the moment it does not intersect one of the members in the affine cover it means that it is again contained in some hyperplane in that smaller projective space which is again a much more smaller projective space. So, you can continue this process this process will have to stop at some stage giving rise to a y embedded in a suitably smaller dimensional projective space with the property that y intersection u i is never empty for every i ok. So, that is the case that we have treated ok. So, in with that in mind this proof covers all the cases ok that is something that you have to notice right ok. So, uh, so this so the the uh, the point is that you know there are no global regular functions on a projective variety all right. And as you can see the the proof needs uh, the notion of uh, uh, the it needs the notion of the function field ok without uh, uh, the notion of a function field you cannot give this proof ok. Uh, so, what I am going to do next is I am going to you know uh, go back to uh, uh, I am going to go back to this issue about projective varieties uh, that uh, the uh, uh, that there is no uh, uh, proper analog of the affine coordinate ring for the projective case. So, for the projective case uh, the analog of the affine coordinate ring is a projective homogeneous coordinate ring, but the big deal is that while the affine coordinate ring is an invariant of the affine variety the projective coordinate ring the homogeneous coordinate ring of a projective variety is not an invariant ok. So, uh, to, to explain that what I am going to do is I am going to uh, 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 I am going to look at a very simple situation. So, I am going to do the following thing. So, you know uh, I am just going to take I am going to describe what is called the duple embedding ok. So, the duple embedding ok. So, so the idea is the following. So, what we are going to do is we are going to take we are going to take projective n space okay and then so you fix d positive integer okay and uh, uh, and uh, well i'll also fix n so let me write fix n and d integers okay and i'm going to take pn and i'm going to embed pn into p capital n ok where capital n is n plus d choose d minus 1 ok. So, uh, so what is this number? So, you know the well the homogeneous coordinate ring of p n is polynomial ring in uh, n plus 1 variables ok and 
Now what I am going to do is that I am going to uh, look at monomials in these uh, variables, but all of degree d is given degree d okay. So, let m 0 etcetera up to m sub n be the monomials of degree d in x naught through x n okay. So, so each uh, m i looks like uh, you know x naught to the power of m m naught into x 1 to the power of m 1 and so on x n power m sub n with summation of all the m i is equal to d okay. You are just you are just writing out monomials of uhhh total uh, degree d okay. Uh, I mean products of all these x i's powers of x i's such as the powers add up to d and how many such monomials you will get you will you can check uh, that these these many monomials is what you will get okay. I mean n plus d choose d is what you will get uh, and therefore you know uh, if you you if you look at the uh, homogeneous coordinate ring of this bigger projective space uh, it will be k of y naught etcetera up to y capital N. and this n is just this uh, uh, n plus d choose d minus 1 right yeah. So, the the, uh, the number of monomials will be this much okay and if you label them as m naught uh, m naught through m n you are uh, you are actually getting n plus 1 and that capital n plus 1 should be this. So, this is the number of monomials of degree d in small n variables. Now, what you are going what we are going to do is we are going to define a very nice map. So, this is the uh, so this is a map from p n to it is it is a monomial embedding. So, it is p n to p n p small n to p capital N and we, we call this as we use the word phi d I mean we use this let us use the symbol phi sub d and what we are going to do is the following thing. See any point here is of the form lambda naught uh, etcetera lambda n this is how a point here looks like these are the homogeneous coordinates of a point in projective space okay. And what you are going to do is it is very simple you are going to send it to this point where these small n uh, small n plus 1 values are substituted for these x i's okay in the right order in each of these monomials okay. So, that you get these this you you get capital n plus 1 uh, coordinates which will define a point in whose uh, homogeneous coordinates will define a point in the bigger projective space. So, you know I am I am let me write it as m naught of lambda naught etcetera lambda n blah 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 and it will go on up to m n of lambda naught etcetera lambda. Okay. So, this is the map see you have lambda naught through lambda n and then you give me a monomial like this you substitute for x i lambda n okay and you do this for each of these capital N plus 1 monomials you will get these capital N plus 1 coordinates take the point and of course, this is these are the monomials in some order okay some some order for example, you can use uh, lexicographic order on the powers if you want okay. Uh, you can use the lexicographic order on the on the variables and their powers right. You can have some uh, suitable order after all this is a finite set. So, you can choose a decent order. So, this is the map okay. Now, the question is now the, now the point is the following the point is that this map embeds the smaller projective space as a closed sub variety of a bigger projective space okay. This is a closed embedding okay that in other words this map is an isomorphism of its onto its image and the image is a irreducible closed sub variety of higher bigger projective space okay. And uh, so well so what is that uh, so how do you, how does one see this. 
So the first thing that uh, uh, one notice notices is that you know if you take uh, so you know you you define uh, whatever is happening here in terms of coordinates can be reinterpreted in terms of uh, commutative algebra in terms of the corresponding homogeneous coordinate rings. So what we have is we have for this we have a map in this direction the opposite direction and mind you this is uh, so I will call this as Phd upper star okay because it is going to uh, induce in some sense in some sense pullback of regular functions okay we are Phd okay and this is well k uh, y not y n and this is k x not x n okay and what is this map this map is very simple you just send y i to m i the map is pretty simple after all there are exactly as many y i's as there are m i's okay. So, send the corresponding yi to the corresponding mi. So, what this map does is that it takes mind you this yi is degree 1 alright whereas this mi is degree d it is a degree d monomial okay. So, what this map does is it takes every degree 1 thing to degree d alright and therefore this is called a graded homomorphism. So, what it will do is it will take the degree 1 piece to degree d piece okay and it will take the degree r piece to the degree r times d piece okay you know if i instead of yi if i put yi power r it will go to mi power r and the degree of mi power r will be rd so this is what is called a graded homomorphism mind you these two are graded rings we are not thinking of them as affine coordinate rings of the affine spaces above no we are thinking of them the reason why we put this s is to re remind keep reminding ourselves that there is a gradation that's going on and this gradation is very important whenever you're working in the context of projective varieties okay in this case they are projective spaces. So, phi d, phi d upper star of you know if I take s uh, uh, r the degree r part p and k this will land inside s uh, dr uh, homogeneous part of the small p and k this is what it does it takes. So, you know this is what is called a graded homomorphism. So, it is graded we say it is graded of degree d phi d star is a graded k algebra homomorphism of uh, degree d okay this is what it means it takes the any degree uh, l piece to the corresponding l times degree l times d piece okay and uh, it is a fact that if you take the kernel of a graded homomorphism it is always a homogeneous ideal it will be a graded ideal it will be a homogeneous ideal okay. So, the fact that this is a graded homomorphism will tell you that it is kernel a kernel of a homomorphism is always an ideal but the fact that it is graded will tell you that the kernel is a grade is a homogeneous ideal okay. So, this will imply that kernel of phi d star is a graded ideal is a homogeneous ideal I mean I am just saying that you know if a polynomial here goes to 0 okay I am just saying that if a polynomial here goes to 0 which is the same as saying that polynomial belongs to the kernel then every degree d I mean every homogeneous part of that polynomial also individually has to go to 0 that is because you know if you take the polynomial and take any degree l part that will go to a to a, the it will go to a degree l d part okay and therefore if the image is 0 then it will you will get that each homogeneous part of the polynomial goes to 0 you know. So, it is very easy to it is very easy to verify that if if f is in kernel phi d star 
okay uh, and f is sigma uh, f sub l l equal to 0 to some m okay where f l belongs to s l okay this is the breaking up of f into its various homogeneous parts s sub l is the uh, degree l homogeneous piece of of this big p n okay then you know phi d upper star of f 0 will be phi d upper star of f that will be equal to just uh, sigma l equal to 0 to m uh, phi d upper star of f l okay but you see this phi d upper star of f sub l this will belong to s sub l d of this p n small p n okay and as l changes these are all in different pieces and and this so you know these these are all pieces in various different degrees and if the sum is 0 then each piece has to be 0 that is what uh, direct sum means. So whenever a uh, whenever a uh, polynomial is 0 then every homogeneous piece has to be 0. So and these are uh, the different homogeneous pieces of the image phi d upper star of f okay. So what this will tell you is that phi d upper star of f l is 0 for every l this is what it will tell you and so what you are saying is that if phi d upper star kills f then phi d upper star kills every homogeneous component of f and that is precisely the same as saying that if f belongs to kernel phi d upper star then every homogeneous component of f also belongs to kernel phi d upper star that is another way of saying that kernel phi d upper star is a prime is a homogeneous idea okay. So and you also notice that the kernel is also a prime ideal why because the image is a domain after all. So the moral of the story is that the kernel this kernel of phi d upper star is a prime ideal it is a homogeneous prime ideal and therefore its its 0 set will define a projective uh, uh, sub variety a closed sub variety of the bigger projective space and the claim is what is that what is that uh, uh, closed sub variety of the bigger projective space it is actually the image of this okay. So further kernel phi d upper star is prime since s small n k is a domain target is a domain okay. So the 0 set of kernel phi d upper star inside the big projective space is uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yes and uh, is a sub variety so projective variety it is an irreducible closed subset okay and the claim is that the image of phi d is exactly this the claim is the image of phi d phi d is exactly z of kernel of phi d upper star this is these are this is these are the claims and the second important claim is phi d from uh, this little pn to if you restrict it to that image is an isomorphism of varieties so this is the claim the claim is that this phi d the so called d upal embedding it maps this variety projective space isomorphically onto a closed sub variety and that closed sub variety is nothing but the 0 uh, I mean it is the 0 set of the kernel of this homomorphism okay and uh, so this is a claim all right this requires a little bit of uh, computation okay but you know uh, before we uh, try to settle these claims. Uh, 
I just want you to look at uh, I just want you to look at the case when a small n is 1 okay and d is 2 okay it is the simplest case and the reason why we often look at that case is to tell you that you can have two projective varieties which are isomorphic but their homogeneous coordinate rings are not isomorphic okay. So uh, take uh, n equal to 1 d equal to 2 okay if you take n equal to 1 d equal to 2 then you have p1 k you have phi d this is phi 2 into p well here I am going to get uh, so I will get 3 choose uh, 3 choose 2 which is the same as 3 choose 1 which is 3 minus 1 this is 2 I am going to get 2 so it is p1 inside p2 okay and uh, you know and I have this z of kernel of phi to a star inside this. So you know I, I just want you to uh, I just want to verify uh, uh, this for the case n equal to I mean n equal to 1 d equal to 2 is the simplest case alright. To verify it for the general case uh, we will need further calculation but there is a there is a lesson to be learnt even in this simple case okay. So you know uh, how does one uh, how does one uh, ensure this so you know so, so what is a map the map is lambda 0 lambda 1 goes to the monomials in uh, uh, you are looking at monomials of degree 2 in 2 variables okay. So you know so you have x0 and you have x1 uh, so the small n is 2 so you have x0 x1 and then you are looking at monomials of degree 2 in x0 and x1 so you get m m0 which is x0 square you get m1 which is x0 x1 and you get m2 which is x1 square these are the 3 monomials you will get alright and therefore what is this map you are going to send lambda not lambda 1 to lambda not square lambda not lambda 1 lambda 1 square that is what this simple map is okay and uh, and what is this phi 2 star this phi 2 star is uh, is the map that is going to go from uh, s of p2 which is just identified with k of y0 y1 y2 to s of p1 which you know is k x0 x1 and you know what this map is you are just going to send y0 to well according to this definition you are going to send y0 to m0 which is x0 square y1 will go to uh, uh, x0 x1 and uh, y2 will go to x1 square okay. So are you, are you able to uh, see that right and what is and what is a kernel of uh, what is a kernel of let us calculate kernel of phi 2 star what is the kernel of phi 2 star. Well kernel of phi 2 star uh, you know you can you can you can see this uh, uh, y0 is going to x0 squared y1 is going to uh, x1 squared I have crammed up everything here so y1 is going to x0 x1 sorry and y2 is going to x1 squared okay you can easily see that uh, y1 squared minus y0 y2 goes to 0 okay. So this contains the ideal generated by y1 squared minus y0 y2 okay because this is going to go to 0 and uh, if some element is in a in an ideal then uh, 
the ideal generated by that element is also in the triangle and mind you this is a degree 2 element so it is a homogeneous element so the ideal that it generates is a homogeneous ideal it contains in this it is contained in this and uh, And you know in fact if you use some uh, if you use some commutative algebra you can show that this is exactly this uh, kernel okay. So uh, see the reason being that uh, this is irreducible y0 squared minus y1 squared minus y0 y2 is an irreducible polynomial therefore the ideal it generates is a prime ideal okay and this is a homogeneous prime ideal right and the height of this ideal is going to be 1 uh, that is because uh, that is because of you know that is just because of uh, Krull's principal ideal theorem okay. So, Krull's principal ideal theorem says that you take an Eutherian ring and you take an element in the ring which is neither a 0 divisor nor a unit then any minimal prime ideal uh, that contains that element will have height 1. So, if you take any minimal prime ideal that contains this it has to be equal to this because it is already prime and therefore it is its height is 1 and since its height is 1 the the zero set of this will define a hypersurface okay which is a one dimensional object okay whereas this will also have the same height okay so what this should tell you is that the zero set of y1 squared minus y0 y2 will contain the zero set of kernel phi2 star you will have this and this guy is one dimensional this is a one dimensional object okay this is a one dimensional object that is because you know uh, if you just look at the zero set of this in the in the pro in the affine space over this projective space you will get the affine space over this projective space is three dimensional okay and there I am having a single irreducible polynomial therefore it is zero set above and the affine space will give me one dimension less uh, sub variety a co dimension 1 sub variety so I will get a 2 dimensional sub variety but then when I when but then when I rem remove the origin and come down to pro the projective space I will cut down 1 dimension therefore I will get only a 1 dimensional object. So therefore this is a 1 dimensional irreducible closed sub variety of projective space okay and that contains this okay but then uh, th mind you this is also an irreducible closed subset of projective space but the point is that this contains phi 2 of phi 1. by definition it contains phi 2 of p1 because you know you take you see take any uh, uh, take any any element see take any point take any point in phi 2 of p1 uh, it is of this form okay and uh, the fact that uh, the, the way we have defined phi 2 star will tell you that this is contained inside this. I think that is uh, probably pretty easy to see uh, just a minute I think I just have to write it down. So you know uh, if if g is in z of kernel phi 2 star g is say g of so g is a polynomial in uh, 3 variables y0 y1 y2 then phi 2 upper star of g is 0 that is g of instead of y0 if I put x0 squared x0 x1 x1 squared is 0 this is what it means uh, sorry g is just in kernel phi sorry suppose g is in the kernel okay not in not the 0 set suppose g is in the kernel write g as a polynomial of these 3 variables and then 
so if it is in the kernel phi 2 upper power of g is 0 so that means g of this is 0 mind you this is a polynomial uh, this is happening in k of x0 x1 that is how this map is defined okay. So this implies that you know if you take a point uh, for a point uh, lambda not uh, squared uh, for a point lambda not comma lambda 1 of this p1 we have you know g of lambda not squared lambda not lambda 1 lambda 1 squared is 0 I mean if g of some polynomial is 0 then for the polynomial whatever variables you substitute that also should result in 0. So, so this this implies so this calculation actually tells you that phi 2 of p p1 the image of phi 2 uh, image of p1 under phi 2 has to be in the 0 set of this kernel because everything in the kernel vanishes on this. So the so you know now what you must understand is that you know this is already one dimension okay this is this is also this is already one dimensional mind you phi 2 is a uh, uh, topologically phi 2 is an injective uh, in fact topologically you can check phi 2 is a homeomorphism okay to phi 2 is injective actually phi 2 is injective uh, it is topologically a homeomorphism okay uh, these are all things that you can check. So uh, since it is a since phi 2 is a homeomorphism phi 2 of p1 which is the image of phi 2 is topologically isomorphic to p1 and p1 is one dimensional therefore this is one dimensional okay. So that means this is already one dimensional okay this will be one dimensional but this is also one dimensional and this is a closed subset okay and in a in a in a in a finite dimensional no theory and topological space okay if you have a closed subset of the same dimension then the closed subset has to be everything in other words if you are if you take if you go to a proper closed subset the dimension has to fall if you go to a closed subset and the dimension does not fall then the closed subset has to be everything okay this happens in a finite dimensional no ethereum topological space, space which is the case with all our varieties okay so this will tell you that this this will tell you that this is equal to this is equal to this okay so so the moral of the story is so you know if you use a little bit of topology then you will get that phi 2 of p1 is the same as uh, uh, the zero set of kernel of phi 2 star and that is the same as the zero set of this And in fact uh, what I want to say is that uh, uh, see this 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 phi 2 see this phi 2 is actually a so therefore this phi 2 actually gives an isomorphism of p1 with this 0 set okay which is actually the 0 set of y1 squared minus y0 y2 this is the same as the 0 set of y1 squared minus y0 y2. okay these two are equal for dimension reasons and this is an isomorphism of this with that okay and in fact I am saying this is even an isomorphism of varieties this this thing is even an isomorphism of varieties and uh, you know the uh, one way to check it uh, check it is by uh, uh, you know to check that a morphism uh, is has a certain property it is enough to check it on a cover a cover uh, a suitable cover of the target uh, and then you pull back that cover to get a cover of the source and restrict the morphism to each of these uh, element members of the cover and if this morphism has a particular property for each member of the cover then it has that property throughout for example uh, uh, so you know if I want to show that this map from p1 to the image if I want to show that it is an isomorphism it is enough to show it on a cover and what cover will I use I will use the usual cover of p2 which p2 has cover consisting of u1 u2 u3 I mean u0 u1 u2 
which are the 3 A 2s which cover P 2. So, you know I can make a computation uh, involving that ok. So, well you know let us let us try to do that computation for a moment. So, you know if you if you look at uh, uh, so you know I have this so I have this P 2 here and I have this u, suppose I take u, u 0 uh, then I have this uh, so I have this z of kernel phi 2 star and then I will get z of kernel phi 2 star intersection u 0. So, I get this diagram uh, this is this intersecting with u 0. So, uh, and you know and you know this is uh, uh, well u 0 is identified with a 2 by phi 0 you know and u 0 corresponds to the place where y 0 is uh, non zero all right. And therefore, uh, under this isomorphism uh, this will be identified with a closed sub variety of a 2 ok. And if I take so I have so I have p 1 to p 2 I have this phi 2 if I take phi 2 inverse of this z of kernel uh, or I simply take phi 2 inverse of u 0 it will land inside uh, so you know it will land inside this ok. So, I have u 0 u 1 and u 2 the 3 a 2s that cover p 2 and I am working with u 0 and I am taking the inverse image of u 0. Taking the inverse image of u 0 under phi 2 is taking the same as taking inverse image of u 0 intersection z ker ker kernel phi 2 because z kernel phi 2 is actually the image of this that we have already seen it goes like this the map factors like this ok. And mind you uh, said theoretically this map is uh, 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 you must understand that said theoretically this map is injective this map is set theoretically injective and it is set theoretically subjective ok. Uh, why is it set theoretically injective because you know if you have lambda naught lambda 1 and you have lambda naught prime lambda 1 prime suppose they go to the same thing ok. The fact that you have this mixed product here uh, first of all you will get uh, uh, lambda naught squared is equal to lambda naught prime squared and you will get lambda 1 squared is lambda 1 prime squared. So, the only problem is that you might get it when you take square roots you could have taken different square roots, but then the fact that this lambda naught lambda 1 is also equal to lambda naught prime lambda 1 prime will ensure that uh, 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 lambda naught lambda 1 you started with should be equal to lambda naught prime lambda 1 prime you can easily check injectivity and you can get you can check surjectivity because you know any point here is actually here any point here is actually here. So, the square of the middle coordinate is equal to the product of the first and the last coordinate ok. Therefore, you can take the square root of the a square root of the first coordinate and you can take a square root of the last coordinate that will give you a point here which will go to that ok if you take the correct square roots. Therefore, it is both injective and surjective is uh, a very easy set theoretic checking only thing is that you can take square roots because you are in an algebraically closed field you always will have square roots of elements ok that is where uh, there you need algebraic closeness of course otherwise for all our arguments about varieties we are we are at the back always assuming algebraic closeness ok. So, it is very easy to check this, this map is uh, bijective it is very easy to check that this map is a homeomorphism ok that is very easy to check. So, but you know the big deal is uh, I am I am looking at this map ok what is this map going to do see it is the same map it is lambda naught uh, lambda 1 going to after all let me write the map above it is lambda naught colon lambda 1 going to lambda naught squared colon lambda naught lambda 1 colon lambda 1 squared this is the map ok. And the moment I go into u naught I mean I, I that means that, that my lambda naught squared is not 0 ok and lambda naught squared is not 0 means that lambda naught itself is not 0 the point is that this is an affine variety ok. The, the point is that this is an affine variety here 
I need a larger diagram. So let me draw it again. So you know, so I have this P one. So I have this P one. I have P two, P two, and I have U zero here, which is identified by P zero with A two. And you know what this map is? This is your this map is just something that sends uh, y. Uh, T0, T1, T2 is mapped to well T0 is not 0 on U0 so I will send it to T1 by T0, T2 by T0 this is what this map is okay this is what this map is <coughs> and what is this map? This map is lambda 0, lambda 1 going on to lambda 0 squared lambda 0 lambda 1 lambda 1 squared that is what P2 is okay and I am uh, taking and mind you this map actually factors through uh, this 0 set of kernel of P2 star inside this okay which I mean let me just call it Z so that it is easy to write down. So and if I intersect with u0 I will get I will get z intersection u0 and that under this isomorphism phi0 will go into z0 okay and uh, if you follow it up uh, uh, so you know if I take phi2 inverse of u0 that is uh, an open set here in p1 alright and if I now write out this map all the way to z0 okay the map will be lambda naught colon lambda 1 going to well uh, you see first of all uh, lambda naught comma lambda 1 will go to this okay and this will go to division by lambda naught square. So this is so this map will finally land in <coughs> if I go all the way to z naught you know the point I will get is I divide this by lambda naught so I will get lambda 1 by lambda naught comma uh, lambda 1 squared by lambda this is the point I get okay when I follow it all the way up and mind you <coughs> since I am since I am taking inverse image of u naught lambda naught squared is 0 is, is, is not 0 which implies lambda naught is also not 0 which means actually this thing is actually in the u0 corresponding to this projective space this p1 also has a cover by two a1s namely u0 and u1 so uh, you know if so i i i i i will just call them b0 and v0 v1 so that i don't confuse with the u0 here okay so in fact this is this fellow is inside uh, uh u uh, so this is inside v0 okay where this v0 in this projective space this is open this is the open which is identified with uh, uh, a1 by by a phi not here <coughs> is identified to a1 okay and this do not confuse this phi not with that phi not okay maybe I can uh, uh, so that you know I uh, let me not call this phi not I will call this a psi not this is a standard identification of v0 with a1 v0 is a locus where the first coordinate uh, x0 does not vanish okay and you see and under this identification uh, this point here will go to wh what is the point it will go to it will go to the point lambda 1 by lambda0 okay and therefore finally if you take this and and phi2 inverse u0 is an open subset of v0 so its image here will be an open subset of a1 okay and if you finally write out the morphism the morphism is this and uh, mind you it is not a I should not put square brackets it is round brackets here here also it is so uh, these are coordinates in affine space okay they are, they are round brackets and they are uh, coordinates separated by commas okay not you use square brackets only for homogeneous coordinates. So you know finally when I write out uh, 
this for phi 2 if I take the inverse image of u0 from phi 2 inverse u0 to uh, u0 if I write out the morphism after going to the affine piece here and the affine piece the corresponding affine piece there the morphism is lambda 1 by lambda 0 going to lambda 1 by lambda 0 comma lambda 1 uh, lambda 1 squared by lambda 0 squared that is the map. So, the map is simply t going to t comma t squared that is what the that is the map the map is just t going to t comma t squared and it is a map from uh, uh, a1 to a2. So, when I compute this map p2 from p1 to p2 ok in on this affine piece on this affine a1 where the first coordinate in this p1 is first homogeneous coordinate in this p1 is not 0 and on the affine piece here where the first coordinate piece the first coordinate in this p2 is not 0 which is an a2 then and when I translate this map finally I am getting the map t going to t comma t square is not that a morphism that is a morphism because uh, proje projection on each coordinate gives me uh, uh, a regular function. So, projection on the first coordinate gives me identity projection on the second coordinate gives, gives me t squared ok. So, this is a this is a regular function the so the moral of the story is that phi 2 inverse u naught uh, uh, the see if you take so phi 2 restricted to phi 2 inverse u naught from phi 2 inverse u naught to u to its image which is z intersection u uh, u naught is a morphism ok. This is a morphism alright and actually the funny thing is it is actually an isomorphism. This is actually an isomorphism because you know if I take this map t going to t comma t squared that is an isomorphism because you know if uh, there is the inverse morphism which is given by projection on the first coordinate. If I take the map t going to t comma t squared ok and if I project on the first coordinate I will get the projection on the first coordinate will send t comma t squared back to t ok. Therefore, it will projection on every coordinate is certainly a morphism all right. So, the moral of the story is that I have an inverse morphism such that this followed by this is identity ok and uh, where is the inverse morphism defined I am looking at the graph of uh, I, 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 am, I am actually looking at points of this form and what are these points the, these are the points of the parabola y equal to x squared this is this is lying see these are all points on z of uh, 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 y minus x squared. After all t comma t squared is a parametric representation of the parabola and z of y minus x squared is just it is a conic it is a conic it is a plain conic it is a conic in a2 it is a parabola in a2 and uh, uh, all the points t comma t squared is if it if you vary t you are simply going to get all the uh, points on this conic only thing is t is not 0 ok. Uh, uh, no I, I can have a lambda 1 0 so lambda naught is not 0 but lambda 1 can be 0 so this t can be 0 as well. So, the moral of the story is the moral of the story is that this map is not just a morphism it is actually an isomorphism and in fact an isomorphism. Okay. So, what I have proved is phi 2 if you take if you restrict to phi 2 to phi 2 inverse u naught to uh, to its image that is an isomorphism I did this for u naught you try it and write it down you do it for u 1 and u 2 also it will be an isomorphism. So, what you have done is you have checked on a cover that phi 2 is an isomorphism and therefore, it is an isomorphism. So, phi 2 actually gives you an isomorphism of p 1 on to z. So, I repeat what I have proved is phi 2 uh, 
from phi 2 inverse u0 to z intersection u0 is an isomorphism ok. Similarly I want you to check that phi 2 from phi 2 inverse u1 to z intersection u1 is an isomorphism you can write it out and phi 2 from phi 2 inverse u2 to z intersection u2 is also an isomorphism ok and z intersection u1 z intersection u2 z intersection u0 form a cover of z because u0 u1 u2 form a cover of p2 and what you have done is you have checked that uh, morphism is an isomorphism on a cover and therefore it is an uh, because the property of being an isomorphism is a local property ok. So what this will tell you is that uh, phi 2 is actually an isomorphism of p1 onto z ok. So, so, so let me write that here uh, and now I want to uh, state the important point similarly you can check phi 2 in uh, restricted to phi 2 inverse of ui from phi 2 inverse of ui to z intersection ui is an isomorphism for i equal to 1 2 thus phi 2 from p1 to z is an isomorphism because z is the union of z intersection u u0 z intersection u1 and z intersection u2 okay so this is a, this is why you get that the image of p1 here is this and uh, it's an isom it's an isomorphism onto the image but now comes the big deal this is also a p1 okay and that is actually a twisted p1 you know if you want to think of p1 as a projective line okay then the image here you have seen locally it is a conic it is a it has, it has been twisted into a parallel parabola. So, what has happened is this this line p1 has been mapped isomorphically onto a conic locally okay but the beautiful thing is even though these two are isomorphic projective varieties if you calculate their coordinate rings the coordinate rings are the homogeneous coordinate rings are not isomorphic okay that gives us the lesson that the homogeneous coordinate ring of a projective variety is not as well behaved as the affine coordinate ring of, ring of an affine variety it is not an invariant okay. So you know if you calculate the homogeneous coordinate ring of p1 what you will get is you know this is just k x0 x1 okay and what is the homogeneous coordinate ring of z it is the homogeneous coordinate ring of the target p2 modulo the ideal of z and what is that that is just k y0 y1 y2 modulo what is the ideal of this z it is just the ideal generated by y n squared minus y0 y2 okay and these two are not isomorphic even though So the see this is a this is a polynomial ring in two variables all right and this is a polynomial ring in three variables and you are going modulo degree 2 homogeneous polynomial these two these two rings are not isomorphic you can uh, well uh, you can try to prove that as an exercise that this ring cannot be isomorphic to this ring because actually you know this ring will have the full uh, universal property for a polynomial ring in two variables this will not that is how you check that this is not uh, isomorphic this cannot be isomorphic to this because a polynomial ring has a universal property this is a polynomial ring in two free variables so it has a universal property whereas that property will not hold you can you cannot find an analog of that property for this ring and that will show you that this cannot be isomorphic to that okay. So I want you to check as a as an exercise that these two rings are non isomorphic ok as k algebras they are not isomorphic and therefore the homogeneous coordinate rings of p1 and z are different 
but yet p1 and z are isomorphic as projective varieties so that gives us the lesson that the homogeneous coordinate ring of a projective variety is highly dependent on the embedding okay if you take the if you so the embedding uh, the embedding decides how your homogeneous coordinate ring is going to look like and the homogeneous coordinate ring can change even though your variety up to isomorphism does not change. So, this is the problem that for projective varieties you cannot keep track of them just by looking at their homogeneous coordinate ring. So, in to sum up this and the previous lecture what I want to tell you is that unfortunately with projective varieties neither can you use global regular functions the ring of global regular functions for the simple reason it is just constants nor can you use the uh, homogeneous coordinate ring because it is not invariant and this is really in sharp contrast with the affine varieties where the ring of global regular functions is the same as the affine coordinate ring and that is an invariant you can completely uh, recover the affine variety from its ring of uh, uh, from its uh, ring of regular functions is the same as its affine coordinate ring okay but you cannot do that with the projective variety so this a uh, this necessitates that you this problem that you have in in which is of interest in higher algebraic geometry that you take a projective variety to study it you have to study all its embeddings into various projective spaces and look at the geometric properties of that embedding of those embeddings and try to extract more information <coughs> from those embeddings just looking at the homogeneous coordinate rings with respect to the embeddings will not help ok you need to extract some more information ok. So, that is uh, and, and usually this kind of study is accomplished by studying so called uh, line bundles and linear systems on uh, which are connected with embeddings namely morphisms of a variety into projective space and this is usually done in a <coughs> second course in algebraic geometry ok. So, with that I will stop.